All right. Hey, if you're joining us online, just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being a part of our service that way. We are continuing our series, The Four Things That I Wish, I Just Wish Everybody Knew About God, because here's the, here's the deal. And maybe some of you are here, or maybe you're watching this, where you're just not so sure about the God thing. And I, and I mean, I totally get that. There's so, so many different thoughts out there and stuff. And I really believe this. I, I believe that everybody has an opinion about God. Everybody does, whether they believe in him or whether they don't or they think certain things about him. Everybody has an opinion. But I really believe that most of those opinions, not all of them, but <clears throat> most of those opinions are wrong. And we come up with these opinions about God from sound bites, from you know, little clips in a movie, you know, or making fun of God or Christians. And you know, maybe even when we were younger, in a Sunday school or something, where we didn't have a complete understanding, we just heard some things, and we all come up with this image of God. And, and I think, and I just believe this all my heart, that if every person knew these four things about God, it would revolutionize your life. It would, it would change your life. It would bring fulfillment and completeness. It would bring understanding of, of everything, of, of the future, of heaven, of hell, of, of God, his presence, of who we are. All of those things, if we understood these four things, these four things are crystal clear. They're in the Bible. They're in the history of Jesus. They're, in, they're displayed in people's lives. That these things are clear. In the first week, we talked about these, this one, and then that was, is God is on your side. You know that absolutely God is on your side, that God is for you. He is not against you. His rules, his laws, the things he says, I want you to do this and don't do that, that's because he loves you. That's God's on your side. He wants your life to be awesome. He wants your life to matter. He wants you to be complete and fulfilled. God is for you. He is not working against you. And I know sometimes we've had experiences in our life and we think, where was God? God was working. And I know it's hard to see, but God was working and God is always, always on your side. Last week we talked about this one, that God is always with you. You're never, ever alone. And in the difficulties and struggles in life, and sometimes we can feel so alone, we can feel so broken, we can feel so lost, and we can feel that nobody loves us and nobody cares and everything's against us. God is with us all the time. We just need to connect, and I'll tell you what, in our lives, and I, and I hope and pray that from last week, and if you weren't here because it snowed, you know, go online and watch that message because I really believe that every one of us, it would change our lives if we knew no matter what we're in, God's right there to turn to He's right there. He's with us all the time. God, I need you. God, I don't know what to do. God, guide me. God, and God is always with us working in our lives. And today I want to talk about this one, that God has a plan for your life. This is, if you and I understand these things about God, it is absolutely fulfilling and life-changing when we know this. That God has a plan for your life. Have you ever thought, have you ever just, just been contemplating things or thinking about what is the real meaning of life? Because throughout human history, people have always been asking that question. What is the meaning of life? Why am I here? And maybe you've May, a struggle or a, a, a bad spot in your life, you've actually thought about it. I know I, in the past, have thought about this. Thought about, really? This cycle of life is kind of a drag. I mean, I mean, if you think about, well, I go to work every day. So many of you, you know, you work so hard. And uh, so many people today work 10, 12-hour days. You work. Why do you go to work? So you can have a place to live. So that you can rest up so you can be ready to go to work. And so that you can buy food to be healthy enough to go to work. So that you can buy a car to get you to work. So you have to work to enable yourself to work. You know, and it just seems like, really, is that what life is all about? Is I do all of this just so I can sustain myself? Like, there's gotta be something bigger than that. Or even the generations. I mean, my family just saw my parents. You know, these generations keep keep going. I, I remember when my grandparents were a part of my life, 
And I was a kid. You know, and then I thought my parents just were, you know, they know it all. They're, they're awesome. And then my grandparents. And then, and then my grandparents died. My parents move into that role. I move into their role. And pretty soon, I'm not hoping it happens tomorrow, but pretty soon they're going to be gone. Then I'm going to be in that role. Okay, then my kids are where they are, and then my grandkids will be where I was. And then I'm going to die, and then my kids will be in that role. You get the picture? You ever stop and think about that? Is there any meaning to this? I mean, just this cycle of life. What, what's it for? Is there any meaning to this? And I think that most of us don't get depressed about it because there's enough dreams and enough goals and enough unattained things in our life that we think are going to make it worth it. We, we do. We're, we're like, I don't, get, I don't get bored at work. Or I don't get in this, that's all it is, is work. No, because, because there's a sliver of, besides what it takes to, to survive, I can do extra with it, and I can buy a boat, and I can buy a motorcycle. Oh, I just can't wait. I get everything. I'll get my cabin, and oh, we'll travel. We're doing, and I think it's that, it's that little hint of, Oh, but there's going to be, hey, we work for the weekends, right? I mean, like, I'll do all that as long as I get that day on Saturday that I get to, and, and I think that that keeps us going. But we all know people that have gotten everything that they want. So you and I still think some things are going to make us happy and fulfilled, so it keeps us going. But there are some people who have had the ability to buy everything they want, do everything they want and go everywhere they want to go. And for many of those people, if they were honest, and some of them we even know their stories, they would say, wow, wasn't as fulfilling as I thought. Wow, is that all there is? Hmm. We know of some celebrities and things that have committed suicide. The one that comes to mind is Robin Williams for me. Because he was here in Lindstrom a couple years ago, I mean, just six months before he had committed suicide. And I remember my daughter showing me a picture of Robin Williams, and I thought, that is one empty person. He can do whatever he wants. He's got popular, he's reached every goal and beyond what you and I might have. And you know what he discovered? There's got to be more to life than this. This seems so empty, so meaningless. So what is life all about? Why are you and I here? What is our life? And here's the deal. God has a plan for your life. You're not here by accident. You actually were designed by God for a purpose, for a purpose that is bigger than just getting what you want. That you and I have a purpose, we have value, that there is a plan for our life that fits into something bigger than us just getting, you know, like, comfortable. Something far bigger than what we can do for ourselves. That you and I are created to have a purpose to fit into something that God has for us that, that is bigger than, than what we could possibly imagine. It's bigger than being selfish. It's actually even bigger than this life. It's bigger than life itself, that we have an eternal purpose from God in our lives. You are valuable to God. God has a plan for you, and only you can fulfill that role and that plan that he has for you. That's why we're all different. He only made one you, because there's one spot, one role, one thing that only you can fulfill and do. And I know that as we think about life and think God has a plan for life, this plan for him is, is bigger than where we work, bigger than what house we buy, bigger than what job we have. And, and now, there are times that God actually chooses people and say, I want you working at this place. But I'm just telling you, this is from my opinion. Some might argue with this. But I believe that God's purpose for our life is so much bigger than just where we live, where we work. I, I, think, I think God would say this to all of us. If you're asking me what house to buy, he would say, which one do you like and which one can you afford? I don't think God cares, for the most part, maybe once in a while, of really where you live. I don't even think God cares really where you work. I think God's purpose for our life is bigger than that. It's 
when we choose to be married and to marry who, when we choose to live in a house, where, when we choose to take whatever career we choose to do, and God will guide us in that, but when we choose to do that, when we choose to go to any church that we choose to go to, once we choose those things in our life, God says, I have a purpose for you. No matter where you live, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, I have a purpose for you bigger than that stuff. And that purpose is an eternal purpose to be a part of God's plan, of God's mission, of God's eternity. God wants you to be engaged with him. Not just know about him, to be connected and engaged in him, in your personal relationship, in your personal life. Let God be the center, the very center of your life. And to be engaged and involved in his mission, his eternal mission of reaching people for his kingdom. And that is the very plan that God has for our life, for every one of us. There is a place that we fit into his mission and his purpose in this world. And he kind of refers to us, and the Bible refers to us, the Apostle Paul several times refers to this as being the body of Christ or the family of God. And once you and I become believers in Jesus Christ, we are now a part of the family of God, and we have a purpose in that. That's, get, that's part of God's will for our life. He says, or I believe this, that your purpose is to be productive in his plan. Part of the very purpose you were born is to be productive in God's plan, in God's mission on this earth. Not to just be a bystander, not just to be a consumer, not just to know and receive and like visit what God does and go to meetings and things, but he actually wants you to be productive in this plan, in this mission that he has. Listen to how the Bible describes it, and I just think about the body of Christ and how you know, he puts all this together. He says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. He gave them to the church, and this is a whole Bible talks about this, the church being believers. He has given to the church this for a reason. There's a reason that there are people called into full-time ministry to do this stuff. It's to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. That there's actually a plan that God has for each one of our lives. His plan for my life, part of his plan is to be a pastor. That's part of it. But his plan for my life is to go far beyond being a pastor. It is to be in ministry for him. There's a day that I'm not going to be. I'm going to follow my dad. My dad's retired. He used to be a pastor. He's no longer a pastor, but yet... He's still very much connected and involved in the mission and the work of God. My mom still serves donuts at the donut shop at the other church. We won't mention it. My dad still teaches Bible study at the other church, but maybe someday we'll measure up. I don't know. But hey, God has this plan for us that everyone, to equip God's people, if you are a Christian, listen, this is hard. Let me sit down here for a second and just... I know we come from all walks of life. I know we come from all different, you know, some of us are just testing out this whole Christian thing and what's in it for me and what does God want and some of us like have been for a lot of years. But here's the thing. This is a concept that we don't focus on very much because what I'm actually suggesting here is what God's telling us is this, that he has a plan for your life. No matter where you've come from, no matter what your experience was with him, he has a plan for your life. You have a purpose in his mission, in his plan. You have a purpose there. And he wants you to fulfill it and be productive. Everybody has one. And we go to Bible studies and we come to church so that we can learn, be trained up, to be engaged in his mission in this world. Another scripture says this. It goes on and says, From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love 
as each part does its work. As each and every part does its work. I, I talk about it kind of a lot, and I don't mean to bore you with it, but we live in a world that is against God. We do. We live in a culture that is against God. There is an enemy against human beings trying to keep us from our Father in heaven. And this work, this mission that God has, there is nothing more important than this mission. I believe that it lies in the hands of Christian people whether God's mission will succeed or fail. God has given us whatever we need to make it succeed. He has. You and I are the ones that will either cause it to succeed or cause it to fail. And, here's, and I know this sounds kind of blunt or whatever, but it takes every part, everybody, every part. If 50% of us are engaged in doing our part, we will probably be 50% successful. But what if we all were? And even, and, and I'm, I'm really asking you, every one of you as individuals, wherever you are in your walk with God, I'm asking you to get engaged and involved in what God's doing because you have an intricate part of that. You are a piece of this mission of God working in this world. And I know so many of us, like this is foreign to us. I'm not a church helper. I'm not a church worker person. So many of us would think, but I, I'm not qualified. What, I mean, what can I do? I'm not important. I have, I have no abilities. To, you know, I'm certainly not going to get on the stage and start teaching a Bible lesson. I, I can't sing or you know, do those kind of performance musician stuff. And what can I do? And not, not only some of us are thinking, what can I do? But you're honestly thinking, I'm not needed. The church has been going on for 2,000 years, and the church will continue to go on without me. I would beg you to reconsider. Beg you to reconsider. You are important. You are critical. You are mission critical. You are God's plan critical to the success of God's plan. No matter how big or small the role you play, the role is critical. And I know we always feel that somebody else will do it. I don't have time. I'm not qualified. I, I know we get all that. I don't have time to tell you today, but I'd love to tell you my story. I've shared it years ago, but uh, I fit all of those categories, all of them. But God has used my life, and God wants to use your life. Listen to what he says about every one of us. For just as each of us has one body, okay, we understand this concept, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. I mean, thank God. You know what? Can you imagine if... <laughs> we'll go on. I just had a thought. You ever wonder where those thoughts come from? Anyway. So in Christ, we, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We belong to each other. What, he, what this means is we need each other for God's purpose and God's mission, you know, God's plan for the church, for us in this world. We are all important to each other. He goes on, he says this. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each one of us. Thank God we're different. We all have different gifts. They are valuable. Every gift is different. You know, I, I can't sing. I, I wish I could. You know what? As a matter of fact, if there was one ability I had, besides flying fighter jets, the second one would be being able to sing. I mean, I just would love, I think singing and singing well, leading worship is the greatest way to express your heart to God. And I just, I wish I could. But you know what? We're not all great singers. We don't need 700 worship leaders, okay? We don't. 
But we all have a different gift. We are all a part of one another. Our gifts differ. Some of you are the most amazing greeters I've ever seen. Some of you are just naturally friendly. The room lights up. You're friendly to everybody. You know, some of you are amazing servants. Some of you are hands-on people. I can fix this. I can mow the grass, or I can pound these nails, or I can vacuum this. Or, I mean, just, we're all, we're all so different. Thank God we're so different. In our very personalities, we're different, and we need each other. One more verse says this. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand and not belong to the body, would it not for that reason, would it for that reason stop being a part of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to stop being a part of the body. The the whole point here, and he goes on and on, and that scripture goes on. And here's the thing. Can you say any part of your body is worthless? No. When's the last time you really focused on your pancreas? (laughs) Probably haven't. Probably doesn't get a lot of views. Probably doesn't, you know, make a big scene. But would you say it's not important because, it, hey, it's not on the stage, doesn't have a prominent role, nobody really sees it. We probably spend more care about our hair than we do our pancreas, but do you want your pancreas to go away? Of course not. Now, from the outside looking in, it might look like, well, I mean, that pancreas ain't that important. Really? Talk to a doctor. Take it out. See how important it is. Or your kidneys. Or your optic nerves. When's the last time you've thought about your optic nerves? I'll tell you what. Those suckers are important. You'll never see them. They're extremely important and they are part of the body. Have you ever, we all have, have you ever stubbed your big toe? Now remember that when you dropped a brick on your toe or something. Do you remember how it affected your whole body? You could still function. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you hurt your little toe, and it's like your whole body's paralyzed, right, from one side. <laughs> I can't move. Here's the deal. You guys, we are all that mission critical. We are all that important in the body. And you know what? I, I just want to say this. I want to give you a couple of examples of some people in our church that if you feel you're not important. If you feel I can't add, I want you to know, and I'm begging you, no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been coming, God has a purpose for your life. He, he really does. And you know what? Your purpose is to be productive in his plan, to be a part of it and be productive. There's a man, his name is Doug. I tried to get a picture of him several times, and he said, no, pastor, don't do that. No, no, and he actually, I think he threw something at me. But <laughs> listen, this, this guy named Doug, he comes into this church at least three days a week, sometimes more. He does 90% of the cleaning in this church, Doug, by himself, 90% of it. There's a few other people that, that help out and appreciate that. But he does uh, the bathrooms, the vacuuming, the cleaning everything. The, the, I mean, have you ever walked in this place and it's just like a mess? Never. Never. Matter of fact, you've never even thought about it. You never thought, how does this place get clean? It's Doug. He don't get paid for it. He has another job. I asked him, I said, Doug, I've asked him several times. Doug, like, are you retarded? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Why? Why do you serve? Nobody sees what you do. You're in here and you work hard. You work for hours. You do it week after week after week after week after week after week. You do it. Why do you do this? And he says, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. He says, Pastor, thanks for letting me do it. I get to be a part of everything that happens in this church. I am connected to everything that happens in this church. And he said, the blessing is bigger than money could ever pay. And I'm suggesting to you, maybe Doug needs some help. 
You could help, Doug. Maybe you could fit in that role. Maybe you could help out with something like that. There's some more people in our church. I mean, so many, there's hundreds, but I want to show you a picture here. This is Jessica. She and and her wife, Jeff. His, her, her husband, Jeff, sorry. He, uh, sorry, Jeff. (laughs) Come on. There's Manly right there, huh? I think he's even got Be a Man t-shirt on. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you know what? I mean, they got regular jobs. They got kids. They got a regular life, just like the rest of us. But she volunteers to actually lead our youth group. Doesn't get paid for it. Volunteers. Put hours and hours in every week doing this like it's, like it's a second part of life and dedicated and committed. And Jeff helps out. This guy right here, you know what? Our Wednesday night kids program, as many as there's so many people volunteering. And tra- I mean, this guy, hey, he sets up, he cleans up. He's, he's a part of it. I mean, he is a part. It wouldn't happen without these guys being involved in what they do. And she's also a great cook and makes food on Wednesdays. We won't get into that, but it's awesome. They are, they are amazing. So I've asked, like, same thing. Why, why do you do it? Why do you do so much? You, you, could, you could do what other people do and just have your own life. You'd be a great Christian and be off by yourself and just do your own thing and pray every day. And here's, here's the, their main motivation is this. Their main motivation is because there's a need. This mission of God needs people working it. There's a need. We are volunteering to fill needs that need to be done. They're filling, fulfilling their role. Then there's just one more couple I just want to show you. Dave and Mandy. Okay, now here's the deal. The only reason he's leading worship at this church is because no other church would have him. Look at him. <laughs> this couple is so amazing. Now, I'll tell you this. We wouldn't be who we are without this couple. They are at the core of so many things. I mean, obviously, you know what Dave does. He's up here. He's one of our worship leaders. Uh, all, did you know that our whole worship team doesn't get paid anything? Our two worship leaders don't get paid a thing? that they do all this volunteer. Do you know how many hours that takes? And uh, and you know what? They got jobs. They got kids. It's a priority that this is a part of my purpose in life. Dave goes to work to make money to to feed his family. But his mission in life is to lead worship. Okay, his purpose in life is to lead worship, to be engaged. Mandy sets up tunes in these lights and make sure that you know lights change when they change and do that stuff they both work with kids on wednesday nights they're incredibly involved i've asked dave said dave why why do you do this and you know what he said because there was somebody doing it when i found god he said you know when i was invited to a church and i discovered jesus christ Somebody else was doing that then. I want to do it for others. It's amazing. I want to do it for others. And as I, I wrap this up and we got to go, I just want to read one more, one more scripture to you quick. We'll just go to the last scripture. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one of us are not fulfilling our, our role and our purpose, Every part suffers with it. It's not going to stop the ministry of God, but it certainly isn't going to be as effective as it is. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices. On Easter, 51 people stood up to say, I put my faith in Jesus Christ for the first time. That wouldn't happen if if we weren't doing our parts. He says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. You are a part of the body of Christ. God has a plan for your life. You have a purpose to be productive in God's plan, every one of us. And I am just going to close by saying this. 
If you are not fulfilling a role, your role, would you please do it? Please. Start somewhere. Get involved. Get engaged in the work of God. And I would say this to every Christian in every church. No matter, I, w- I wish every single church would hear this very same thing. If you go to church here, please get engaged in a part of what God's doing here. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for calling us into your work, calling us into being involved in something bigger than just our life. Thank you, Father. And I just pray, God, that you would give each one of us the courage to step out, to step up, to say, here I am. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.